a little boy is tormented in a room of laughing people, being forcibly transformed by a witch into a mouse. It's pure nightmare fuel, parental guidance suggested. The 1980s were a memorable time for dark fantasy films, due in no small part to the work of Jim Henson. While he's more known for the colorful and friendly Sesame Street and The Muppets, we can't forget the disturbing scenes he brought to life in The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth. I think I'm getting smarter. It's a piece of cake. The villains of The Dark Crystal, the vulture-like Skeksis, are burned into the minds of many 80s kids, and in 2019, Netflix brought them back to traumatize a new generation with the prequel series Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. As far as the original film goes, the Skeksis Emperor's death scene is a particularly disturbing way to show the end of life. But the Skeksis aren't the only creepy creatures in this dark fantasy universe. Other weird monsters like Landstriders and Gartham also provided shivers up the spine. Henson believed that a good dose of fear was an important part of children's diets, and he certainly provided a large portion of that in The Dark Crystal. If you asked older millennials or Gen Xers to name the scariest movie of their childhoods, many would answer Return to Oz. Return to Oz sets a dark tone right off the bat, with a child being strapped down for electroshock treatment. Ready? Yes, Doctor. It only gets scarier from there. While the Wheelers are the most obvious nightmare fuel, with their fixed smile masks and horrible laughs, nothing scarier than the Hall of Head sequence. In that scene, Dorothy has been taken captive by Princess Mombi, a headless woman who keeps cabinets full of beautiful heads, which she uses interchangeably when she gets bored. What do you think? I think you're very beautiful. At night, Dorothy sneaks into a cabinet to get the magic powder she needs to escape, only to find a stray head that starts screaming. That wakes the rest of the disembodied heads, which also start screaming. Then, the headless body of the princess starts towards Dorothy, its arms outstretched like a zombie. No, I, I know we're not in Kansas. Roald Dahl is one of the all-time greatest children's authors, who laced his books with scary scenes and dark humor. Dahl's most frightening book has to be The Witches, and when Nicholas Rogue adapted it into a film in 1990, he somehow managed to make it even worse. The scariest things in the movie are the witches themselves. They look normal on the outside, but when they reveal their true natures, they become memorably monstrous. One horrific scene involves the transformation of the boy hero and his friend into mice. It sounds like it could be cute, but it comes off like the transformation in An American Werewolf in London. <laughs> If creeping dread is scarier to you than gruesome practical makeup, then look no further than a scene near the beginning of the movie in which a young girl gets trapped in a painting for the rest of her life. It's mind-boggling that this movie was made for children, and if The Witches isn't enough for you, the film adaptations of Dolls James and the Giant Peach and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory also manage to be pretty sinister in their own ways. Ghostbusters is a perfectly fun introduction to the world of ghosts for kids, but there are a few moments in this comedy that are genuinely memorable scares. Hey, he pulls the wagon. I make the deals. You want to ride? <laughs> the opening scene in the basement of the New York Public Library will intrude on your thoughts every time you find yourself alone in the stacks. Ectoplasm drips from record card drawers, bookshelves fall over on their own, and an apparition transforms from a benign elderly librarian into a shrieking skeletal monster when provoked by stance. Another terrifying moment is undoubtedly the scene where arms suddenly protrude from Dana's chair and she's pulled into the other room. The sequel is arguably even scarier, with the painting of Vigo the Carpathian being genuinely creepy. On a mountain of skulls in the castle of pain, I sat on a throne of blood. The Black Cauldron is a lesser-known Disney movie from the pre-Little Mermaid slump. It starts off similarly to The Sword in the Stone, with a wart-like character, Taran, and his pig companion, Hen. 
The first traumatic moment comes when Hen is pignapped by the Gwythaints, the hench dragons of the evil villain the Horned King. Then the king uses the Black Cauldron to raise the dead and create an army of zombie skeletons known as the Cauldronborn. Soon the Black Cauldron will be mine. The original climax of the Black Cauldron was considered too disturbing for children and was re-edited. Despite this, the movie was Disney's first animated feature to be given a PG rating instead of the usual G. Compared to other Disney cartoons, the imagery is dark and creepy. It's easy to see why this movie wasn't a hit. You shall all be turned into frogs and eaten. Tim Burton has made a career out of weirdly creepy family films. Only two of his movies, Sleepy Hollow and Sweeney Todd, are R-rated. All the rest are PG or PG-13, lulling unwitting parents into a false sense of security. The first and arguably best of Burton's feature-length spook fests is Beetlejuice, starring Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin as ghosts who haunt a family with the help of a mischievous spirit called Beetlejuice. You know what's really beautiful about this? You two kids pick me. You didn't have to, but you picked me. It makes me want to kiss you guys. Come on, come no. on, give me one. No. While most of Beetlejuice is mild horror comedy, there are a few real shocking moments. One of these is when the mild-mannered Adam and Barbara change their appearance in an effort to scare the obnoxious family living in their home. The practical makeup effects of the inhabitants of Death's Waiting Room and the puppetry when Beetlejuice is transformed into a snake are also fairly creepy. Henry Selick's The Nightmare Before Christmas has become a cult classic, with the tie-in merchandise still selling well to this day. Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, and Sally, a mannequin brought to life by a Dr. Frankenstein-like evil scientist, may be friendly, but there are plenty of background creatures that make the film scary, especially for younger children. The most frightening character in the film is Oogie Boogie the scene in which he straps down and tortures Santa Claus before revealing that he's made entirely of bugs is a lot to swallow. Now, look what you've done. The two-faced mayor of Halloween Town isn't easy to look at either. The concept of Christmas gifts coming alive and attacking children is also pretty frightening. So while The Nightmare Before Christmas may be safe for small children, it's still surprisingly creepy. Laika is an animation studio that thrives on making creepy stop-motion movies, including Paranorman, The Box Trolls, and Kubo and the Two Strings. It all began, however, with perhaps the darkest Laika film of all, Henry Selleck's Coraline. Coraline finds a secret door in her new house that leads to an alternate version of her own world. There, she finds monstrous versions of her parents, an other mother and other father. We aren't worried at all, darling. Soon you'll see things our way. The other mother is particularly sinister, with her fixed smile and blank button eyes. The other mother charms Coraline with delicious feasts, but soon traps her, with a plan to sew buttons onto Coraline's eyes, too. As the film progresses, other mother becomes more skeletal and spider-like, with claw-like hands that terrorize Coraline and the audience. Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events is a book series about the poor Baudelaire orphans, three children at the mercy of their uncle, Count Olaf. Olaf is an actor who frequently disguises himself in an attempt to steal their inheritance. It was recently made into a Netflix television show, but before that, it was a standalone film starring Jim Carrey as Olaf. Well, hello, hello, hello. I am your beloved Count. Oh, love. The books and the film are both very bleak for children's stories. The gothic stylings have a lot to do with that, but what really makes the movie dark is its underlying theme that adults will always let children down and are not to be trusted. He tried to kill us with a train. And where would this man get a train? Where am I going to get a train? Now, children, that's enough of this foolishness. While the hurricane scene at the end of the film is full of peril, it's probably the scenes in which Olaf outright abuses the children that carry the most scares. Even though the Baudelaire's are exceptional children, they feel powerless when mistreated by an adult with lots of influence. They've already lost their parents. How much worse can things get? In the end, you can think of the film as a reminder for kids growing up in normal, loving households to appreciate what they have. Studio Ghibli broke out into international success in 2001 with Spirited Away. It's surprising that this was the movie that became so big, given that it's perhaps Ghibli's strangest film. And that's saying something. 
Spirited Away starts with 10-year-old Chihiro's parents being turned into pigs in a mysterious abandoned theme park. Afterwards, the huge-headed bathhouse matriarch, Yubaba, magically sews Chihiro's mouth shut when she tries to ask for a job. I was wondering if you could give me a job. Chihiro lets a spirit called No-Face into the bathhouse, where he proceeds to start eating the workers. No-Face is black and shapeless, but has a cavernous mouth that opens up in its chest. Chihiro's friend Haku can assume both human and dragon forms. In one scene, he's injured as a dragon and left covered in bloody scratches while spewing blood from his mouth. There are surface-level scares in Spirited Away, but it's also frightening on a deeper level. Like the Baudelaire orphans, Chihiro is separated from her parents and enslaved by a tyrannical figure, an unsettling scenario that most kids can relate to. Monster House is the first Sony Pictures Imageworks film, with an eerie animation style that's almost real but not quite. The result is an uncanny valley vibe similar to the unintentionally creepy look of the Polar Express. That's not the only reason it's scary, though. As the Nebercracker, the cranky custodian of a possessed house that sometimes comes alive and tries to eat children, Steve Buscemi delivers one of the all-time great voiceover performances. You think you could just terrorize my lawn? No, I'm sorry! You want to be a dead person? No. Elderly neighbor Nebercracker is initially a scary character himself, threatening children who come near his lawn, but he eventually joins forces with the kids to try to defeat the evil abode. You've been a bad girl, haven't you? The inventive ways that the monster house is personified are ingenious. It has a tongue, a uvula, and various other body parts that the kids have to contend with. It makes for an inventive, scary family film and a perfect Halloween watch. The Spiderwick Chronicles is based on a book series and features a slew of fantastical creatures. Freddie Highmore plays twins Jared and Simon, who move into a new house, discover a magical book, and realize that the house is surrounded by magical creatures, most of them hostile. The main villain is Mulgarath, the shape-shifting ogre. There's also an army of child-snatching goblins, led by a creature called Redcap. You win. You are strong, smart human boy. So don't be foolish. Give us the book. We leave you alone. One of the scarier scenes in the movie involves the children being chased through an underground tunnel by a beast-like troll with a forked tongue and yellow eyes. Towards the end, the house comes under attack by the goblins, who reach up from under the floorboards and grab people's ankles. Eventually, Mulgarath himself gets into the house and onto the roof. On top of all that, this is a divorce drama. And Jared is a dark, angry character who resents his mother. It's frightening, but the tumultuous time following a divorce is something that many kids will be able to relate to.